Thanks for joining us at the Business Growth Cafe, where each week we select from a menu of topics for a focused discussion with an industry expert to provide insights that can impact your business's growth with your host, Angelo Ponzi. I am Angelo Ponzi, your host here at the Business Growth Cafe, and thank you for joining us. Today at the cafe, I'm excited to have J.J. Risha, CEO of Business Vision Advisory and Serial Entrepreneur, here to, in the studio to discuss the road to growth and exit strategies for business owners. J.J., welcome. Thank you very much, Angelo. Before we get started, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your company? Um... Business Vision Advisory uh, got started about six years ago, uh, and uh, it came about after I uh, had started several companies um, as a serial entrepreneur. Mainly, my background is in technology. Um, so, and uh, during the downturn, uh, 2009, I decided to um, start a private equity firm and and uh, um, restructured companies uh, and did some mergers and acquisitions and. Then after that, I thought, okay, maybe I could help other businesses that are, uh, you know, maybe between the five and seventy-five million dollars in revenue, with helping them with their uh, business growth and and potentially fixing their operations, uh, restructuring it, and helping them with their exit planning. All right. Well, in two thousand nine was probably not the best time to start a business. I actually uh, tried to start one then. And that's one of my dead bodies along the road, as I like to say. I've had some successes, but uh, probably more, more uh, litter on the side of the road than I care to think about. Before we get started, I always ask this question of my guests. When it comes to growing your business, what keeps you up at night? Um, I think um, finding the right customer that fits um, the um, who you're trying to serve okay. and and going after the right customer base. So I think um, it's always for any business, regardless if it's a service business like I'm doing, like you do as well, mm -hmm. it's really finding that right customer and finding how to reach that customer. Yeah. And I think that's important too because with what we do, we can run out of bandwidth very quickly. So it's really important that, I, I think, for me anyway, to take on the right customer that believes in, for me, marketing, you know, really wants to move and grow and, and all those wonderful things. Um, so again, to your point, looking for the right customer base. Yeah, that that's very true. Okay. The other question I've now added into my question list is what is the best business advice you ever received? Um, received and Keep giving. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was the second part of this. But oh, okay. okay. There one in the same. One in the so same. So one in the same, and that is focus. So, um, you know, early in my career, when I first started my first company, it was like, what do I do? I'm concentrating on many different things at the same time. But um, at the end of the day, it's really about focus. The more niche, the better, actually, instead okay. of the less niche, the, uh, the better. So, um, so I'd say, I, I would say focus. And, and uh, during my career as, a, as an advisor, I've given this um, same um, to others, saying that you have to focus on exactly what you do. You could have 20 different things, but you need to focus on potentially maybe the low-hanging fruit as, as the first thing. And then you can expand from there after figuring out exactly how to get you know, revenue from that specific side of the business. All right. So not trying to be all things to all people to start, really look at, you know, what is your best opportunity to, to get the business going? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense because so many times as entrepreneurs, we, we have these great ideas. We talked about this in the hallway. We tend to fall in love with them. I've fallen in love with a few of mine that, uh, you know, even though I put the lipstick on them, they were still pigs. <laughs> and, you know, they just didn't go anywhere. And so I think that's a great advice that focusing on what is really important and where are your opportunities for success and, and the other things will come. Yeah, very true. And I, I can tell you, I, I spend a lot of time uh, not only with mature companies helping them with their operations, but I spend a lot of time with startup companies as well. And uh, especially on the startup side, they just want to be the solution for everything yeah. and and you can't be you have to focus and you have to really kind of really laser focus on exactly what where's where is the pain in the market and and who could really use your solution in order to solve their pain right and i think that's that is absolutely the key is understanding how your solution solves a pain for their clients 
and understanding it's not necessarily the, the specific client you're selling the product to, but how do they utilize it to helping their clients grow, That's right? Very true. Yeah, very as true. opposed to, hey, my product's great and wonderful, and I'm beating my chest here if you're not watching the video. And we forget that ultimately it's not about what we do. It's about how we help our customers. Yeah, very true. So I'm going to segue into this. You uh, and a different show. Uh, on uh, Critical Mass for Business. I'm always luck happy to give my friend a plug. <laughs> you mentioned you've had 10 businesses um, and you've had three successes. So tell me a little bit about your dead bodies, but also about your successes. And maybe pick one, one success, one not success. And for the entrepreneurs in the audience that are listening, you know, some advice that comes along with that. Um, so it's interesting. I'm going to go back to focus. Okay. <laughs> so one of the companies that, that I started. Or your lack thereof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or lack thereof. Uh, so one of the companies that I started uh, with someone uh, who was very successful at um, uh, starting uh, another business <clears throat> and taking it to, to an exit. Um, he and I started this business and um, – it, it, he wanted to be a solution. It, it, this is, was specifically around um, a hospitality software for the hospita hospitality. Okay. And so um, my partner wanted to do basically every little thing under earth to solve the hospitality problems. And we wanted, I wanted to focus on one product at a time. So what happened was this business, after um, investing between he and I and, and other investors, about thirty million dollars into it, we had to shut it down. Ouch! So it's um, so, and and it was really the lack of focus. So we ended up developing many many products to solve many many solutions, and never really marketed it properly and sold it properly. Uh, we were focusing on all of them instead of focusing on one at a time, and then taking one product at a time to the market. Okay, you probably needed a fractional CMO to help you out. I did. So, I would have hired you then. Well, right? now, now that we know each other, we can certainly do that. <laughs> All right. So that's one that didn't didn't go well. And while, while the, conceptually, it sounds like you had a solid idea and concept and product, it, it's just that lack of focus that you're trying to, to do too much at the same time and, and didn't do anything, basically. Yeah. Yeah. On, on, on the other side, I, um, you know, one of my biggest successes is um, when it comes to uh, starting a company and actually growing a company, uh, especially when it comes to sale, after you figure out exactly if there's a product that fits the market, if it's really solving a pain in the market, um, and you're, you're actually solving it the right way, is really how you're going to sell it to mm -hmm. To the marketplace, so and and uh, as an angel investor myself, I've been a member of Techos Angels for about ten, eleven years now. Um, I, one of the things I look at is distribution or or channel of distribution, channels of distribution. So, one of my biggest successes was the fact that I found the right channel of distribution for uh, the company at the time. It was a software company for the restaurant industry, oh, okay. and the channel of distribution was uh, the um, the resellers that sell um, uh, point of sale systems, ah. so they became our resellers, and that's how we grew from being, um, you know, here in Orange County to being, uh, you know, to having a national and international presence as well. Okay. So when you were doing that planning for this this go around, did you do market research, or how did you instead of rushing out there with your own software product? knocking on doors, trying to convince, I'll call it restaurant chains or whatever, right. to buy this, that you came to the realization it made better sense to package it with a POS system and go in through that channel. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it came the hard way. That's the only way I can explain it. Okay. Initially, again, I was, it was my second, or second company starting, um, and, and I didn't know very much, but it took me about three years to figure out exactly the right way to do it but then i learned a lot from there but it is um it, it was it was a very painful experience not knowing exactly what to do how to go after the right channel but um we were knocking on doors and that's what we did for a long time we knocked on doors for about three years a lot of persistence yeah and 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 then and then it was proven that it's really not the right way to do it and and then the right way to do it was figuring out one day that it's really the integration with the point of sale system was the right thing to do, which opened the doors for their resellers to sell our products as well. Okay. So all of a sudden you had a massive 
distribution channel Influx. that was already that was already <laughs> built for you. Yeah, yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. Was that your favorite business of your That's three? That's probably my favorite, Your yes. favorite, okay. Yeah. Uh, and all three of yours, or all ten of yours, however you want to look at it, were all based around technology of some type? Uh, technology of some type, software, e-commerce, web, um, yes. Okay, all right. So somewhere along the way, I think you said it was about six years ago, you started Business Vision Advisory, yeah. which is very different than your other ten companies. That's right. So. Why did you decide to flip it to a consulting service as opposed to jumping back into the... Upper? So I, I found out that, uh, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I learned a lot from starting these companies, um, at, you know, uh, operating them, growing them, taking them, taking them to the next level, especially the three that I had an exit. Uh, the others I learned a lot from. So, so you end up learning from uh, the pitfalls mm -hmm. as well. And um, it seemed like... Uh, I could lend my experience and my knowledge to other businesses that are uh, potentially that need such help. And it's been satisfying. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, and I'm not sure if I've told you this story even, and my listeners have heard it, but you're going to hear it again. <laughs> uh, my first business, I started at 23 and my business failed at 23. <laughs> so I made it about eight, nine months before the thing imploded. But that eight or nine months I learned more about business than I ever did in school. Yeah. Um, and, and so from that, you know, really propelled me. And my next business came along seven years later, and that's the one I got to grow and, and eventually sell. That so makes when, a lot of sense. Yeah. So when, when we think about planning and really understanding, I mean, I think that's a, a huge aspect. Uh, there's a number I like to use that a lot of businesses will talk about that it's not the planning, it's the implementation is what really fails. So when it comes to planning, and it sounds like with you and your consulting, you're really also not only involved in the operational side, but also about the planning side and looking long term. So talk a little bit about your belief in, I'll call it the annual plan, but I don't think it's annual anymore. I think it's an everyday plan. It's it's a nonstop plan. Yeah. So um, uh, part of what I do, I mean, you, you do a strategic plan. You have to you have to look at what you're doing in the next six months, year, maybe two years and three years. And, and especially if someone is trying to potentially sell their business or maybe transition uh, the business to someone in their family or maybe their employees, etc. So you have to have the right plan. And, and part Part of what I do, in addition to doing the right planning, um, call it strategic, call it whatever you mm -hmm. want, there's, there's got to be a plan. I think everyone has a plan. Most of them, they have it in their head, but they don't really <laughs> <laughs> write it down. But um, it's, it's really the, con the execution that comes along after that. And I think uh, just based on my experience and rolling up my sleeves and working with these entrepreneurs and business owners, um, I see th most of the time that... The plan that I put together, or maybe it was put by them before, and they're trying to execute it, it doesn't really work all the time. Mm -hmm. So you have to pivot on a regular basis. You have to keep changing, recorrecting, and figuring out really what's the right thing to do in order to get to the next level. And as, you, as soon as you figure that out, that's when you go and say, okay, we know now what works. And now you put a real plan that kind of takes that to the next level. Well, and I think, too, that as we've talked with entrepreneurs, especially because they fall in love with it, I, I was doing some consulting work with this uh, young entrepreneurial group out of uh, UCI, where I'm an uh, expert and resident. Yeah. And when they were describing their product and service, I mean, I immediately had questions. And so when I started to challenge them about how they validated it, and their answer was, well, you know, my aunt, my uncle, my father, my mother, <laughs> my brother, and said, they all love it. Well, yeah. And they, they were very resistant in really trying to go outside of where they thought they already validated. And unfortunately, it, what came to fruition, which I thought was going to happen, is that you know, the thing died in about six to eight months. Yeah. And, and so I think that, that importance and that planning is to really step back for, for you entrepreneurs that are listening, is you've got to take it out of you, right? Get outside perspective, whether you're hiring people like us or whether you're using other counselors, but you just can't talk to friends and family because you're not necessarily going to get the real answers because they don't want to. That's true. They, they don't want to hurt you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned exit planning, and, and so we're going to segue into that. So you get involved with, with not only from the operational side, but also from the operations and helping to build valuations and really set up those exit strategies. 
when the uh, a piece of research or an article that I read not too long ago, it talked about preparing for exit, and it and the article said, and I'll read it said, uh, on average, you take one to five years to prepare. Two to three years if it's a third party, three to five years for family members, or three to five years for an ESOP. I don't know if those are right or wrong in your experience, but when someone really thinks about exit, it isn't like, hey, by the way, I woke up this morning, I think I want to get out of my company, right? So how do you counsel people that the kind of the preparation and the time it takes to really plan for them to exit? So most of the time, they do get up in the morning and, okay. <laughs> and they say, oh, I want to I'm sell. done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, and, and most of the time, uh, really, when they, when they come to that decision is because uh, they've been doing it for a long time. They're tired. It's exhausting. Company's not running very well. And they just want to get out. And uh, at other times is because they, uh, they, they think that their business is worth much more than they think it is, right. and they want to to sell it, and and um, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, most of the time the business is not worth as much as they think it is. Second is um, if you know if they end up fixing it, um, and they sometimes they may not get to a point and say, "I want to sell it." Okay, it's fixed now. It's actually generating revenue. It's generating okay. profits, and then maybe I don't want to sell it, but. To answer your questions from uh, as far as as far as number of years, I would say you would need at least one to three years. Okay, you know probably one is on the very low side. So, you know three years on average in order to be to plan for for an exit, and that's not only to increase valuation to make you know to restructure the company, but there's a lot of other things from you know from could be estate planning, could be preparing your son or daughter to um, have the right knowledge of the business and maybe you know you know educating them in order to uh, run it properly it could be you know finding the right person from your employees to actually you know take over mm -hmm. there's a lot of things and it can't happen okay. definitely not less than one year okay not overnight <laughs> do you find that that companies that come to you uh, are more for operations and and always integrate this idea of exit or uh, I, I would say it's really all over the place. All so, right. so um, you know, it it comes down. You know, sometimes they don't know what they don't know, and, and uh, I think the the most successful business owners and entrepreneurs are the ones that find uh, finally find out exactly what they know or what they don't know, and and get the right help. So sometimes what happens is. Um, uh, you know, they they bring me for operational or to help them restructure, fix mm -hmm. their company. But then I need marketing help, and so I call on on someone like you, saying, "Hey, look, we need marketing, we need sales help, we need, you know, a CFO to help with the financing as well." So so there are a lot of things that are involved, but. I go in there with a fresh perspective looking at, at really everything in the operations. Well, that's really why the companies hire us, because we bring a different perspective. Yeah, exactly. The um, So when, when you're looking at from an operational standpoint, I mean, that could get into everything from supply chain to pricing to uh, internal operations to capacity. You know, you could do a great job and sell a whole bunch of stuff, and then you don't have the capacity to actually deliver. So you have to really immerse yourself into an organization. So let's talk about kind of a perspective, if you will, your perspective in giving advice to people that, that are looking for increasing their valuation. But if I was going to do a top 10 list or top five list of things they should look at, what would some of those be? Um, well, first is uh, the one thing, especially if they're trying to exit, right? Uh, from that perspective, first they need to... Um, you know, find out if when they sell that company is is the is that money that's going to come in is it going to be enough for them to retire if that's what they're trying to okay. do. So that's one thing. Second, um, are they trying to pass this down to their children or maybe to uh, employees, and is that something important? What are they going to do afterwards? You know, they have to plan. What are they going to do after selling that company? And I think that's part of that's again. Those are non non operational stuff, but more of what's going to happen if they sell it. Are they, are they trying to preserve? You know, if it's a large enough company um, uh, to, to sell, are they trying to preserve family wealth to pass along to their children, maybe grandchildren? That's something else. Well, are they uh, looking at doing maybe some nonprofit? Uh, you know. 
work where they're, um, you know, um, giving some money to uh, nonprofit organizations to help them to help with something they're passionate about. So there are a lot of things that that the the business owner needs to think about. Uh, what happens after the sale? Right. Most of the time, they just want to sell, and they don't think about what happens right, right after. You can only play so much golf. Yeah, you can only <laughs> play so much golf. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think we're uh, coming down to the last couple minutes here. So last question for you before we sign off. There's a lot of things that drive business growth, and there's a lot of things that hinder it. So as a business advisor and a business owner, in, in your observations and experiences, where do companies really typically fail and go wrong? And, oh, what, and, and, and what's that advice? To, uh, we'll co- combine it with the advice. <laughs> um, that's that's a really hard question because, you know, it, it, it could be all kinds uh, of, yeah. of reasons why a business may fail. But um, I would say most of the time uh, companies fail because they don't understand what their customer needs are okay. customers needs are so they they have a product or a service and they say if i build it it will sell and most of the time that's not really the case right. what happens is um you get to you have to really understand exactly what your customer needs and then follow on so most people they just sell it's a transaction instead of building a relationship with the customer with their customer base they just sell and move on but they need to do a lot more than just selling and making sure that they just have the revenue. They need to make sure that the product is really serving their customer. It fits their needs and it's solving whatever solution they're trying to solve. Right. And, and so I guess understand your customer would be my, my advice. Okay. Understand your customer, understand your customer base and, and craft, mold your solution, service or product to fit exactly what they need and make sure that you go back and understand that, you know, if, if it's really working for them or not. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I am a, a big component. Uh, uh, component. Proponent. Uh, proponent. Thank you. <laughs> I, got, I got tongue-tied there for a second. About understanding your customer. Because I, I think between either market research or whatever it happens to be, a lot of organizations just don't truly understand. I get, oh, yeah, I know their job titles. Well, that, that's not really understanding your customer. Yeah. So anyway, well, thank you for that. I think we're down to the last few seconds here. So, JJ, thank you so much. Why don't we tell the listeners how they can contact you, your website, all that good stuff? All right. Um, you can reach me at uh, businessvisionadvisory.com. Again, businessvisionadvisory.com. Com, and you can reach me by phone at 949-419-6924. Uh, I'd be happy to sit down with anyone uh, and uh, uh, assess their business at no cost. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us at the cafe today. You can find out more about me, read my blogs, or view the show videos at theponzigroup.com or connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you're a business in need of a CMO and you're not ready for a full-time person yet, Please give me a call. I'm happy to explore that opportunity with you and have a conversation about the fractional CMOs. And please subscribe to the show at the Business Growth Cafe, or we are now on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Spreaker, and coming soon to many other platforms around the world. Join me next week for lunch at the Business Growth Cafe. Thank you for listening to today's discussion at the Business Growth Cafe with your host, Angelo Ponzi. Take a moment to subscribe to this podcast and visit our website at www.businessgrowthcafe.com. Read Angelo Ponzi's blogs at www.theponzigroup.com.